My name is Jana. You're watching Finnish Knitting Stories, episode number 56. We are in my cre creative crafty corner <laughs> in our home in southern Finland. And you're very welcome here. <laughs> um, so I'm a knitter, yarn dyer, crafter from Finland and spinner. <laughs> and uh, I sit here <laughs> and usually chat about my knitting sometimes other things as well and usually on Fridays that happens on Fridays so today is Friday already late afternoon I just came from work and I'm very happy to be here I hope you are as well let's begin <laughs> ah one more thing very important you can find me on Instagram Esketunits and on Ravelry Esketunits and all the important information with the links is in the description box down below now let's begin <laughs> let's begin so should we talk about finished objects first because this is kind of old school knitting podcast where we talk about fo's and whips and plans and things like that and i just realized i i forgot <laughs> i forgot one of the finished objects because that one just came home the kiddo came from school and i'll go grab it <laughs> Ta-da! And it's moist. <laughs> he just came from school and they were skiing during the last couple of hours. And this is damp. <laughs> okay, I will quickly show it and then I'll put it to dry. So I need him a muscle, muscle burrow hat. Now I know how to say that. Thank you everyone for, for letting me know how do you properly say that. Muscle burrow. <laughs> uh, so here it is in all its glory. Two colors, this dark ink blue and then crazy neon green, which is his favorite color. This was part of his birthday gift this year. His birthday was this week. He turned nine and he had a lot of fun. Uh, but we will chat about that in the end of when, when I do the knit and chat. Now I will just in case somebody's not interested, I will just show you the finished object. It's very hard to show because this is this is very damp. <laughs> so uh, I need it a bit longer than in the pattern. I did buy a pattern after all. First I thought, okay, maybe I don't, I can figure it out. And probably I could, but I just decided to be sure. And I bought the pattern. Uh, I need it longer uh, than in the pattern. It's actually quite handy pattern because it gives you... Uh, you can, f it, it, it's also like a recipe. It's not just a pattern. It's also a recipe because you can adjust it according to your yarn. You can knit any size of a hat with basically any kind of yarn. It gives you like a way to calculate the length and the stitch count. It's, it's a, it's a nice pattern. Uh, yeah, I was, <laughs> it, it's damp, it's icky. <laughs> I'll put it to dry soon. So yeah, there is a green side. You can wear it like this. You can wear it like this, slouchy, or you can fold it. I made it long enough that he could have a folded uh, brim. Not really. Is it a brim if there is no ribbing? Anyway, that you can fold it over your ears and he wears it like this. Do I try it on? <laughs> it's icky. Uh, anyway, I will insert, I will insert some videos of him trying it on. I I took a couple of, you you you, <laughs> I took a couple of clips when he tried it on for the first time, and I'll insert them, uh, here. <laughs> so yeah, that's a very very nice hat. I enjoyed knitting it. Definitely not my last one. Like that, I'm going to knit more because little one wants one. My husband wants one. Uh, I actually have half of the yarn left. I have half from each of the skeins because I put that on scale and it's it was about 90... I don't remember, 93, 95 grams. It was less than 100 grams. I did not... Like if I could knit it with one skein of yarn. I don't know. Some people have said that it's not enough, but I had the skeins with 425 meters in it. Probably 400 meters skein would not be enough, but 425 was just right. And I knit mine on 3 millimeter needles, and I think next time I would take 
275 or two and a half because I think I would enjoy a tighter gauge on it slightly. So I knit very tight because I didn't want to change the needle in the big in the middle of the work uh, because you could probably see where. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the place where I would change the needle. So I just knit it tighter, but throughout on a three millimeter needle. Yeah, that was my first finished object. I'm very proud of it. I think I knit it relatively quick because it's it's a long stock in it. But I was I was very determined to finish it for his birthday, which was on Tuesday. Uh, yeah. So I have one more finished object today and <laughs> have you been wondering what is she wearing today? What is that thing? That's my new uh, new cast on and also my new <laughs> finished object. And if you're in, on Instagram, you have probably seen these popping all over the place. It's a Saturday Shrug by Katie Jacks and it's a free pattern. Very simple, beginner friendly, absolutely. Uh, I think it's knitted like in a bulky weight. Mine mine was not in a bulky weight. Mine was a tad thinner. That's why I had to add a few extra stitches just to get the right, yeah, that it would fit over my shoulders. It's a shrug. It's basically a very long tube uh, with <laughs> one knit, one purl. Yeah, just with the ribbing. Very long ribbed tube that you knit with with a thick yarn and I decided that I'm gonna use scraps for mine that I'm gonna go to my stash and pull out the funkiest scraps that I have maybe from like a deep stash <laughs> like yeah and that's what I did so should we talk about yarn <laughs> should we talk about yarn I have some of it here Mm, I don't have this one right here because I used it all, but I will tell you about it separately. So I need mine. Uh, these bits are two strands of fingering weight, mostly merino. There is some sock and there are some singles and then two strands of mohair. And I'm not 100% sure on which mohair it is, but I would say it's drops mohair. I don't know the colors because it didn't have ball bands on anymore. It came from my stash. They were started balls, but I would say that both of them are drops. I think this one is and about the darker one. I'm not really sure, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. It's my stash yarn. Uh, then this pink one, this pink color also has a story. Whoa, <laughs> that's pink. Um, I bought this ball well, very many years ago, many, many years ago, because I wanted to make a neon pink pom-pom. And it's it's not the best kind of yarn. I think it was like 60% merino and 40% acrylic, but I bought it for the color. <laughs> uh, and then I started making pom-pom and this felt so, I don't know, elastic and rubbery and just weird that I gave up on it. I made a pom-pom with some other yarn and then I had this ball just sitting in my stash forever. So now I took it and I added these stripes here and I still have a bit of left. It was a 50 gram ball. And then this, <laughs> uh, this cute yellow one uh, is Surreal Paca. I think the color name was Tweety. Um, Tweety? We, yeah, the little yellow birdie uh, from the cartoon and Tweety Bird. Yeah, Tweety. Um, and the dyer is Eluded Fibers, finished dyer, but she's no longer dyeing yarn. So this was also a deep stash because <laughs> one of my precious treasures. And then this yarn, this yarn was a giant scrappy ball that I have frogged. I have tried to use it already twice and I have frogged it and it has like a whole history, <laughs> whole history of that, that yarn ball because I don't know how many years ago, but many years ago I started like a vest or a shrug. They were very popular at one point. I have made a few where you need like a long strip that goes all around your neck that that's a front and then you knit the back and leave like the arm holes and then you just put your arms through and it's like a vest or a shrug. I have a few of those. Uh, 
So I started one of those. Uh, I wanted it like a gradient and then I built a gradient from a different scraps. You can see it goes like from very dark to lighter, 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 and it ends there with like almost white. So <laughs> uh, I got around halfway of that shrug and then I frogged it. I don't know, wasn't feeling it. And then I tried to use this as the back panel for my pinguono. But it was too dark, I wasn't feeling it, I was actually marling it with this one. And then I took it apart and it was also just sitting there as a one big ball. And then I separated the suri again from, from that. That was two strands of merino and one strand of mohair. But now when knitting I added additional strand of mohair. And still my yarn was thinner than in the pattern. So. I used smaller needle, I only used 5mm, I think the pattern suggests 5.5 and, and I think I added, I think 6 stitches, 6 extra stitches perhaps, not sure, but I had 130 stitches, if that helped. It's a free pattern, you can go check it out. Um, and then I just need a very long tube. Mm, I needed to pattern. I, I, I binded it off and I tried it on and I had a bit of this, this yarn left and I wasn't happy with it. It felt like it's just not long enough on me. The way I want to wear it because I wanted to fold this, this like a collar. And then it was also flopping out. I did a stretchy bind off on it and it was weird and floppy and it felt like it's not long enough. So I ripped it back. <laughs> I ripped it back. I added more. I knit as long as I had the yarn. Before it was nice and symmetrical. Like this part was same length. Like this part was same length as this bottom part. But then I was thinking, no, who's going to look at it? It doesn't matter if, if it's longer. <laughs> because the main thing that I feel comfortable wearing it. So... That's what I did. I kept knitting it and then in the end I changed to even smaller needle needles that it wouldn't flare out. And then I did not do a stretchy bind off. I did a regular bind off which is still quite stretchy with this big chunky big chunky ribbing. And then I just fold it in like this and you get a nice cozy collar. It's very cold in here. That's why I, I need this. I decided that it's just gonna be for me for home and I want it to be in happy funky colors that I would I would just look at it and it would make me happy so this is my new <laughs> home shrug but it actually turned out so nice that I might also wear it outside of the house but I, I really need it with these temperatures our house is at 18 degrees now and this room is at 15 <laughs> yeah because we don't heat this room it has like a minimum heating on and I think it's about 15 here maybe 14 so <laughs> I don't spend much time here in winter I mostly knit in the living room I only record here and then do some other things and yeah we're saving <laughs> we're saving this winter so I'm also wearing my world mania leggings <laughs> could I flash you <laughs> just that you know how cold it is i'm i'm, I'm wearing this beautiful dress <laughs> and then ta-da <laughs> ta-da i'm all warm and cozy <laughs> here uh yeah and thick woolly socks uh <laughs> okay those are my two finished objects for this week should we go to whips i will be showing you three today three Two you have seen and one is a surprise whip because I surprised myself <laughs> as well. It's accidental cast on <laughs> again. So number one, number one, this has a new name. It's called BBR now, <laughs> Boring Basic Raglan. <laughs> and actually I have made quite good progress on it, even though it's boring, it's black, which means it's very hard to knit. We, we have... We have very short daylight hours and in the evening it's it's hard on the eyes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. I don't know. I don't enjoy knitting black yarn in the evenings. <sighs> I have to pull it back. I haven't blocked this one yet, by the way, but I will very soon. My husband called it a boob warmer. <laughs> so you knit yourself a boob warmer. I said, yes, I did. <laughs> and I don't care <laughs> how it looks or 
<laughs> I think it looks very nice. I, I like it and it keeps my back warm and, and I can still knit. It doesn't bother me. Okay, <laughs> back to earth. <laughs> so BBR, a boring basic raglan. I am almost done uh, on the body. Look, I'm knitting. I'm knitting the ribbing. Hello, I'm still here. And uh, yeah, you can't even see how long it is. It is long. It's going to be long, but that was the purpose. It's also very wide. And here is the progress keeper from the last time that I showed it to you. I think it's three or three and a half 50 gram balls that I have managed to add here. No pattern. I'm not using any pattern. I'm improvising, but I think petite knits, no frills, should be quite similar. I think you could get a very similar look. Uh, I probably did the short rows differently, and I have longer ribbing, and I have my own stitch count. I don't know. I just... <laughs> I have knit myself so many sweaters that I know, I know my numbers. <laughs> um, especially when it comes to a certain yarn. This is knit in light loppy color number 0005, which is heathered black. My husband has a sweater in this same color. The, the Star Wars one. You know. <laughs> you know. Okay, um, nothing else to tell about it except that I'm going to be on the sleeve island this weekend. I probably will finish the ribbing today. You can see there is a, there is a ribbing happening. It's happening. And then onto the sleeve island. I promise I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm going to knit the sleeves right, right away. I'm not going to park it. I'm, I, I'll work on it. Let's put it here for our knit and chat. Oh, I forgot to light a candle because I needed to get another candle from the living room and I forgot, but it doesn't really matter. Um, um, <laughs> um my thinking, um, uh, next project will be the blanket. Somebody asked me if Battenberg is the only blanket I'm working on right now. It's not. Of course it's not. I have a few more going. But active active ones... I have two active ones, which is a Battenberg that I could have showed you because I did add some amount of squares to it last weekend during Scrappy Sunday. I work on them usually on Scrappy Sundays. But I didn't bring it. It's in the living room. So I think I, I could show it next time. Yes, let's save it for next time. But I will show you my jelly roll, my reworked jelly roll. Because this one also has some, some good progress. Look, we're on a stripe number three. Uh, and I have full length, like the pale pink stripe and then a bit more red one. It's like dark pinks and reds because I did not have enough red yarns in my in my scrap box and now it's coming orange and I will also soon run out of orange. I don't have much of orange, probably I think one more color I have and then I'll just put these on holder and start next stripe which is gonna be yellow. So kind of a rainbow but not really. I think I will just squeeze in. Uh, I will adjust it according to my scraps according to my scraps, depending on what I have. If I have a lot of greens, for example, I will do a lighter green stripe and then a darker green stripe just to get get it wider because if I just do like a six, seven colors, it's, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be wide enough because here is three. I don't know, what is this one? Around 10 centimeters, maybe, it feels like. And mine is in DK weight because I'm holding it with a... I'm marling it with a strand of white, just bare white, actually creamy, creamy yarn. And I'm knitting it on a four and I checked, these were I think four and a half, somewhere I found, four and a half millimeter DPNs with stoppers on. So that's where we are with the jelly roll blanket. And I actually, I think I prefer it in a DK. I started the fingering weight, but I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. I probably should have mixed all the colors together and not tried to do these same shade stripes. Yeah, I think that was my mistake. It was not working out. I did not enjoy it visually and I just ripped it back and started again. <laughs> and this one is better because it's, it's softer and more cohesive. 
even though scrap yarn projects don't have to but sometimes i i feel like they do <laughs> i feel like they do like my my granny stripe and uh, cozy memories they were all over the place they i didn't plan there anything i just took some color and went with it so and now we come to our third mystery whip i'll show you the bag first <laughs> It's one of the lovely bags by Bertie and Puppet. Can you guess the color of the knit that's in? I bet you can't. This is lovely. This reminds me of summer days in the garden. I got interrupted with a phone call. Some kid stuff. Uh, so, I was showing you the bag by Bertie and Puppet. That reminds me of summer very much. And yeah, I have my new cast on in there. <laughs> Mm, because I'm weak, I'm weak and I want to use yarn from my stash and I also want to knit my, my hand spun yarn this year so I have a new cast on because Amy Palco and Crea Bea they are having a let's lento knit along lento, why am I saying it like that? let's lento <laughs> knit along <laughs> uh, and I joined <laughs> I joined and it's <laughs> it's ridiculous, I know. <laughs> I'm... Neons. Neons. I love my neons. And I started my third, yeah, my third Lento sweater <laughs> with a bit of neons and then my, my handspun. I, I balled up that giant skein that I... I showed it last time there was a picture yeah and I balled it up I realized it's not enough for the whole sweater not even with a very loose gauge and big needles it's, it's just not enough so I'm striping it with the neon yellow yarn that I had in my stash I've been knitting a lot of Oslo hats in this color some years ago I have knit a few and I had a one and a half skein left over and let's see if it's enough actually i'm also holding it with the with the mohair because that one i also had at home um i don't remember what i knit with it but somewhere i have used it because it was not a full it was not a full skein mohair i will probably need to dye up more that's not enough because i'm holding it throughout now i'm kind of regretting that i'm holding it over the hands but maybe i shouldn't have but well it's too late or then I need to frog back a lot. But I thought I just wanted to blend it in more. I don't know. I still might frog. What do you think? Should I frog it back and take the mohair hair off the handspun? Or should I just let it be? It's not a lot of work. I just started it. I still have not separated the sleeves. So, hmm. I think I have... I need to think about it. Do I hold mohair hair over this or or not i don't know i don't know what i'm doing here i just wanted to use this yarn i really wanted to use this yarn and i needed to pair it with something and i'm knitting another lento lento <laughs> lento <laughs> uh, yeah i'm just copying other people <laughs> saying lento and knitting same sweater as everybody else is knitting right now because it's so much fun i love that pattern and did I mention it's by Yonna Hietala of Lina Magazine, Lina Publishing? And it was in the Lina Magazine. I don't remember the number. Could be number 10, 11. Somewhere there it was. Okay, so that's my whip. <laughs> that's my whip and those are all my knits. Should we go to purchases and acquisitions? I have one and it's yarn. <laughs> But I got it from a D stash. I got it from a Facebook D stash. Um, lovely Lotta Lodulin. It's on on Instagram. She's also a pattern designer here in Finland, and she was D stashing some fabulous yarn. And I, I was sitting on my hands not to not to get anything else from from that D stash. But I got these. I could not resist them. Look. I could not resist them and these are the woolly mammoth and it's a natural sock fingering weight and the color is jasmine <laughs> and i want to i think i want to knit a vest with these at least that was my 
that was my intention that I would knit myself a vest with these. They are so lovely and I love the color. I love the wool and thank you Lotta. She also included a little scrap yarn ball for me. Look, that looks like me. Uh, that looks like me. That's so lovely. So it's a D-stash. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> Not that I need one, but yeah, I have made myself a promise that it's okay to buy yarn if I knit more than I buy. If we are in the minus <laughs> at the end of the month, it's all good. And we are because, because I'm trying something new this year. I, I have a lot of journals there on my shelf that but they are all empty because I don't it's not my thing I don't do journaling I don't write stuff down much I I draft I write down some notes or if I'm planning something like knit like stitch counts and stuff like that but I don't keep journals I just I honestly just don't have time and it's away from my knitting time if I start doing that so but I have got them as gifts and I often get them as gifts and they are lovely. <laughs> I love them and I have good intentions of using them. So I just picked one up and I decided that this year I'm just going to write down things that I need in a month and then the amount of yarn that I use and buy just on a, on a paper just here. And I'm surprised that I already have an entry for February because usually that would end on January. So I wrote down all my knits from January. I finished eight pieces, eight items I finished in January with a total weight of 2,855 grams. <laughs> but that's because of two, two, two were blankets, two were blankets. And yeah, I can, I, I, I count yarn as used when the item is finished because sometimes some frogging might happen or I might just give it away if I'm not planning to finish and things like that. So that's why it's so much. And the yarn I brought in is 833 grams, which is a lot, but yeah, that's 333 because of the scrap ball. <laughs> because of the scrap ball <laughs> um, which is lovely I love it and then I brought 200 grams for the beanie and I only used 100 grams from it like 95 let's say and then I brought 300 more grams of the black light loppy for my sweater but it's gonna be used and written off already this month I hope because I started it with leftovers from my husband's sweater and yeah, I needed to bring 300 more grams in because I just did not have enough. That's six balls. And that's it. So I had one knee. So my total is minus 2,022 grams of yarn. So we're good. We're good in January. <laughs> I used more than I brought in. All good. Yeah, it, it, it was easy month because because blankets. Of course, I did not knit the blankets in, Janu in January. Like one was knit mostly in December and another one was knit for four years. But I finished them so I can write that yarn off. <laughs> so I have very good intentions of keeping that <laughs> easy count of things. Yeah. Because at the, end, at the end of the year, I tried to count everything that I knit during that year and I was not writing anything down and it was really hard because some things were on Ravelry, some things were not on Ravelry and then I tried to go through the pictures on my phone and figure out what have I knit this year and I'm just trying to make it easier for myself this year. So you see I'm knitting, <laughs> that means it's time for knit and chat. Let's go to knit and chat. So what did I want to talk about? Um, yeah, we already talked about writing, <laughs> keeping a little, a, a small list of things. Mm, that's one. Then I wanted to talk about pigs with wigs. A few of you got very excited about pigs with wigs. And I've been thinking, wouldn't like a knit along, make along would be fun. Just a very quick one for a couple of weeks because they are tiny. 
except if you want to make a really big pig with wig. But then I was thinking that that pattern is not easily accessible. Unfortunately, it's only in a book. I checked you. I could not find it separately, neither on the designer's web page nor on Ravelry. It only links to the book. And that's a quite old book. I don't think I don't think many people can 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 get it. So what I've been doing, <laughs> I've been gathering all sorts of free piggy patterns on Ravelry. I made the bundle. I made the bundle of free pig patterns in Ravelry. Call me crazy. <laughs> I couldn't sleep one night and that's what I did while lying down. <laughs> I made the free pig pattern bundle just in case you would like to make some pigs with wigs. We could improvise the wigs, right? We don't have to. Yeah, we could just make something fun. I don't know, creative. I don't know. Let me know if... If enough people are interested, let's just arrange something. Let's just knit or crochet some pigs with wigs. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Maybe I could write it to a designer and ask if, if that pattern is available. I don't know. I could not find it on a spot. But if you know, let me know. <laughs> if you know, let me know. Yes, we're in a loop here. So just just putting a thought out there, but I will link the bundle just in case you want to go and check all the cute pig patterns that I found. There are crochet ones, most of them are crochet, but there were some knitted ones as well, and they are fun and fabulous, and I because I want it to be accessible for everyone, so we could just choose any free piggy pattern and make piggies. Why not? I like chickens. I have chickens. Now I, I need piggies as well. <laughs> um, yes. So what else? My vest project is coming along. I have actually caked up yarn, but I'm not going to talk about it yet. I will show it to you when I cast it on because I'm working on a, I'm working on a swatch right now. I need to knit a swatch because I'm holding yarn double and I need to figure out the right needle size. And I have not worked with that yarn before in like, I have not held it double before. So a lot of things to figure out before, before, before I can begin. And yes, I'm now on a kicking up yarn and knitting a swatch stage. <laughs> Just a quick update, but the vest is happening because I have a lovely dress and it definitely needs a vest. It's it's very chilly right now. Yeah, the temperatures have gone down again <laughs> this week. It's it's frosty outside, so the kids have been skiing at school. Um, then. Another thing that I really wanted to do in January, but I did not manage, was my special whip episode. All about whips, and I could again go through my whips and we could count them together, but it's coming. It's coming whenever I have a free moment. Yeah, I need to make time for that. I don't know, it's just... It got away from me. <laughs> I've been just running around and just trying to catch up on everything and it's been it's been a bit stressful here again because a lot of things that I needed to deal with and it just feels like I it's it's a bit much and overwhelming and I can't catch them all. <laughs> you need to choose. <laughs> are you a business owner today? Are you a mom? Are you what are you? <laughs> just a crazy lady. <laughs> um yeah. Life, life, I bet many of us feel like that right now. <sighs> Retirement would be nice when I could just sit and knit in a rocking chair. Oh my god. Or spin yarn. Final wool. Spin all the lovely wool that I have. My spinning has been so neglected and I feel sad about it because I just simply don't have time. It's it's a big process. You need to bring the wheel out because I usually I often spin in this room, but it's so cold here that my even now my fingers are already <laughs> I can't feel my fingers. I, I need to I need to wrap it up soon. <laughs> Otherwise <laughs> I'll be ill. <sighs> Luckily I have my volleys to warm me. So yeah, the whip episode it's coming. I really wanted it in January, but didn't happen. Then what else happened this week? Kiddo had a birthday. I took a half day off. I went to work in the morning and then I took a half day off. I picked him up from school. 
we went for his birthday coffee just me and him because Sophia was still at school and my husband was somewhere else I don't remember where he was he wasn't in he was at work but somewhere I don't know he, he wasn't here anyways so we just went out with him for his birthday coffee yeah juice and coffee I had coffee he had juice we had some pastries together just just a bit of quality time we rarely go somewhere just two of us and I think it's nice just to spend a bit of time with them individually yeah because Sophia is mostly attached to me and before she was a daddy's girl now she's mommy's girl all of a sudden and I don't know I think I don't get to spend that much time with our son right now no we will see <laughs> anyway I try I try my best yeah and then we went grocery shopping we picked some things because grandma grandpa and my husband's auntie they were coming for cake and coffee we just had a little little sit down moment in the evening and we picked a couple of things from grocery and then he wanted to go to the toy aisle and then I told him that okay you can pick anything you want from here today he was like anything I said yeah so he went he's not much into toys at the moment but he loves Legos I don't know it's hard to find a kid who doesn't right <laughs> I think most of the kids love Legos uh, and he loves the Minecraft because that's 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 what he's into so he went to check them out and the selection was not very big they had very small sets and then like a couple of mid-sized ones but there was nothing interesting he loves the ones with animals and then there was that big llama set and he was looking at it and saying oh isn't that cool like a big box with the llama house and I said, yeah, that is cool. And then he was like looking at the price. But it costs 129 euros. I was like, yeah. And <laughs> you can tell that's my kid. He's like, but that's a lot of money. I said, yeah, he's, we're not getting it. <laughs> I said, no, if you like really want to. He's like, no, that's too much money. <laughs> I was like that. <laughs> I know I was like that as a child. I remember when we were getting... Uh, I, It was a very special day. It was beginning of 90s. Like, Soviet Union has collapsed and my parents earned the first dollars somewhere. And we had this a ridiculously expens expensive Mattel uh, store in Riga. And we went there and... I was allowed to pick my very first real Barbie doll and I was just standing there and I remember myself very clearly that I cannot pick anything in the big box because we don't have the money for it. I, I did not know at the moment, did we have the money, did we not have the money, but I had that limiter in my head that, head that too much is too much. Let's go to the smaller boxes. And then I picked a very pretty one in a pink dress. And it was my first and only real Barbie doll. All the other ones were like fake ones. <laughs> the ones I got later. But yeah, that was first and real one. And I don't know, it was it was a very special moment. And yeah, on Tuesday at that grocery store, I was like, okay, that is definitely my kid. <laughs> He has that weird limiter that sometimes it's too much money. And then he went tricky and like, if I pick two, could I pick two smaller toys instead? I, I was like, okay, go wild. <laughs> and then he picked a teeny tiny set with Minecraft because it was like nine euros or so, like less than 10 euros. And I asked, why are you picking that? He's like, look, there's a little duck. <laughs> There's a teeny tiny duck. It's so cute. And he just wanted that set for that little duck figurine. <laughs> and I get it. I, I totally get it. Yeah, so we went home with a little Minecraft set and one Pokemon. Yeah, he, he picked a, a Pokemon, which is fine by me. <laughs> um, yeah. Where do... Where does that come from? I don't know. We have never told him that. Oh, that's too much money. Even if it is, I I don't know. 
okay, I want him to be reasonable and responsible, but I don't want to put limits on him. Like, I grew up with a lot of restrictions and limits because it was different times. But he has it built in. <laughs> it's probably somewhere on a genetic level. I'm very happy about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that I'm not the one restricting him. That it's 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 he knows himself that sometimes some things are just too much money. That 129 euros is outrageous amount for a toy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um why am I wondering? He has weird parents, so <laughs> um I don't think I have anything else for today. Is there anything else? I'm looking at my notes there. Sorry if I'm looking, I'm, I'm watching down. I'm I'm knitting with black yarn and looking at my notes at the same time that I drafted them very quickly. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much it for today. If I forgot something, we will talk about it next time. I've been trying to write things down and if you have any questions you can always ask them in the comments I try my best to respond uh, and if it's a commonly asked question I usually respond it respond to it in a video in the next video uh, yes I'm gonna go now we have a lot of things to do because we're still we're still gonna celebrate his our son's birthday tomorrow his friends are are coming and it's gonna be wild <laughs> it's gonna be wild yeah but that that's what he wanted he just wanted celebration with with his friends and that's what he's getting we need to prepare some food and a bit of think about tomorrow's plans and program and then in the evening he's going to another friend's birthday it's gonna be a very busy day tomorrow <laughs> um but yeah Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your time with me once again. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel to grow. It has grown tremendously because of you lovely people on the other side of the screen. And you're, you're amazing. And I'm wishing you a very lovely weekend. Even, even when times are hard we have our knitting and we can enjoy each other's company and just dream of better times <laughs> okay i'm gonna go now and i will see you very soon stay safe heippa